All right, so welcome. I'm going to go ahead and get started. This is an introduction to essential oils for the birth kit, and this is sort of a compilation of some of my favorite parts to my longer e-course. Just a brief introduction, I'm Stephanie Pearson, and if you want to read more about my educational history or background or learn more about what I have to offer, my website, dailynectaressentials.com is below, and I also welcome your emails and phone calls and things like that. I'm here today because I'm a passionate advocate for essential oil use and self-care, particularly for informed use during the childbearing year. I wanted to begin by telling you a brief story, which is why I am so passionate about this topic. So this picture here is of me the week my first child was born, which was 14 years ago. And believe it or not, as happy as I was to have a baby, I'd wanted kids my whole life. This was one of the hardest times of my life. I had a very difficult labor. I was up for two nights in a row with no sleep. And I had natural childbirth, but I stripped my body of every real energy element that I had. And I was completely worn out. I believe it's called maternal exhaustion. And I went on and raised a colicky baby. So the first week of her life, she did not sleep more than an hour at a stretch, even during nap time, um, which concluded in me running completely on my stress hormones, adrenaline and cortisol. When this picture was taken, I remember I couldn't lower my arms. It was torture to lie down in the grass. I was so full of these stress hormones that the best thing I could do was to keep walking and moving, although I was extremely exhausted. And I now very much understand why sleep deprivation is used as torture <laughs> during wartime. It was awful. I think I slept about nine hours the first week of her life. And I was actually coming from a place where I'd never in my life had insomnia. I had no issues with anxiety. And I wasn't one of those people that had reticular thinking at night that kept me up. I just suddenly couldn't sleep. And it dumbfounded every practitioner I saw. My doctor wanted to give me Prozac. And I knew that wasn't the right path for me because I felt so joyful, but at the same time, so completely burned out. And it took many years for me to just even reach homeostasis again. And these years were full of study of nutrition, acupuncture, massage, yoga. Every night, practically, I had to do yoga to sleep for at least an hour a day. And I loved those things, but I couldn't just live my life. I could never relax and stop doing things for self-care and then feel normal. And it wasn't until about five years ago when I tried my first therapeutic quality essential oils that I actually recovered from this initial incident of, I guess you could call it harm, with the harm it did on my body. And I do believe as an herbalist that you can go back to the initial injury and help yourself even years later. And what happened was a friend of mine gave me essential oils for lice treatment, don't ask, and the whole family put these oils on our scalp at night and they included lavender, rosemary, melaleuca, and geranium. And I actually had some really positive side effects. Not only did it help with the lice, but I slept deeply for the first time in four, or 11 years, I guess, at that time. And I remember that you're supposed to have a dream and then another dream and really have deep sleep. I hadn't had that in years. And over time, I came to, to realize and understand that I had sleep debt and that the really the cure wasn't all the pills I was taking and all these treatments I was doing. It was sleep. And so it was so exciting for me to actually have something that would help me sleep. And I still love geranium to this day. Um, the oil actually comes from the leaves, but here's the geranium plant. And it's also such a special oil. It's used for nearly every problem, like common issue that comes up during lactation. And it's, it's just a beautiful plant. It lowers nighttime cortisol levels. So even if you have very depleted cortisol, if you can save your cortisol from being elevated at night, you can actually keep it and use it for energy the next day. So this changed my life. This was such a profound shift. And also, I think that this is just one story, though. I, I know that thousands of people are discovering the power of essential oils to make dramatic shifts in their physical and emotional health. People have lost faith in our medical system. They're hungry for alternatives. And in the U.S., we spend $1 out of every six on health care. So that's a lot of money. <laughs> um, natural alternatives in healthcare are on the rise. Essential oils have been used by people for many thousands of years. So why are we just now becoming so excited about essential oils? Like, what's the hype right now that's going on? That's what I hope to answer in these next couple of slides. Oops, sorry here. Okay, so let's just start by looking at essential oils and understanding what their effects are and why they're so profound. 
So these are natural aromatic compounds found in plants. They're 70 to 50 to 70 times stronger than herbs. They're powerful and they have safe benefits and positive side effects. Um, and there are two unique properties that cause much of this magic to happen with essential oils. The first one is that essential oils are molecularly very, very small. The second one is that they're lipids or fats. And what these two things to together allow them to do is to cross biological barriers. Therefore, essential oils can help us by crossing barriers such as the blood-brain barrier, the cell membranes, the gut lining, the placenta, even they can cross through the skin, the muscles, the breast milk, and into cells to create very profound change on very deep levels in the body. They can also cross through the biological barriers of harmful microbes. So this is key, and on this slide you'll see how the oils pass through the phospholipid bilayer of the cell membrane to reach the virus inside. Here are some studies and an illustration showing how essential oils can cross the barriers on microbes. The first is a study from PubMed on a blend called OnGuard. It's an immune support blend from doTERRA, which has been shown to attenuate the H1N1 virus. Also referenced is a similar study on an essential oil blend that was found to make MRSA non-viable. So MRSA is actually a superbug or a bacteria that's adapted to antibiotics and become stronger and been able to um, oftentimes create like a, a kind of a gooey slime around itself or other times a hard peptide shell. So this picture is actually showing how the constituents from the essential oils can drill into the hard shell, in this case this is oregano, and get inside and then actually lyse the bacteria. So this is pretty incredible for us to to have research on this and to be starting to use these for this purpose. The third study is actually on thyme essential oil, which um, has been shown to lessen the requirements for antibiotics in treatment. So these are really medical studies, um, and here's another thing from the medical world. The American Medical Association has said that if they could find an agent that would cross the blood-brain barrier, they would be able to find cures for ailments such as Lou Gehrig's disease, multiple sclerosis, Alzheimer's disease, and Parkinson's disease. So you can see how much potential these potential these have to truly change our health and uplift our lives. So and here's the slide because I want to talk a little bit about purity. You can see the, nat the nature of essential oils is to be very very potent and to cross deeply into the body. Quality and purity are, are of paramount importance here especially when dealing with pregnancy, nursing, and infant care. And I hope that you get that. These go really deeply into us and they're very potent, okay? So we want to be really careful with how we use them and what types of oils we use. And I actually chose, after a lot of research and many, many emails and investigation, I chose to use doTERRA oils. For one reason, those were the oils that initially helped my, my fatigue and my issues with sleep. But I also like many other things about them, like they've undergone at least five tests for purity and potency, and these tests are completed and certified by third-party chemists, so not just from within the company. Most essential oils on the market are created for scent alone, not for therapy. 95% of essential oils are actually produced for the perfume, cosmetic, and food industries. There are very few government-enforced regulations in the industry of essential oil production. So in fact, in the United States, they only ask that 5% of what is written on the bottle actually be in the bottle. So if you pick up a bottle that says pure, you know, organic lavender essential oil, it could just contain 5%. It doesn't have to be that the whole bottle is pure organic lavender essential oil. The rest could be adulterated, it could be synthetic, it could be a carrier oil. So there's a lot of places where we could be misled about this. Um, and another reason that I like the options through this company is because they have total transparency about their purity. You can actually look at this website, which is called sourcedyou.com, and learn about the production of a specific oil. You can enter the quality ID number on the bottom here and get the GCMS test for your specific batch of oil. So in conclusion to this part of the class, like why, why is this not your grandmother's aromatherapy? It's different because of technological advances in production and also because of a newfound commitment to quality. We now have access to very pure, very potent essential oils and they offer a whole new level of wellness. So, and here is an example of one of those tests that you can get offline. So people really, 
need this in their lives. We live in a world under stress, full of automobiles and pollution and ever-growing exposure to things like electronic devices and man-made items that cause pollution. So these plants actually offer a connection to some of the greatest gifts of the earth. Mindfully produce plant essences from the roots, the leaves, the bark, the sap, and the flowers of plants from every continent. So I actually really noticed this connection and appreciate it. I know before I found essential oils of this quality, I would go on a lot of walks in my neighborhood. And when it was the season for it, there was lots, there were lots of flowers blooming and seeds I could crush between my hands and smell. And it was so uplifting to me. It really got me through my day. But and where I live in Portland, Oregon, where it's gray nine months of the year, I think we've had six days of sun in the last like five months or something, and flowers are just starting to bloom. It's so nice to be able to open a bottle and be like, wow, this is the, the scent from the root of a grass in Haiti that I have in my hand here. It is the very essence of such a like high energy, high vibration, beautiful thing of the earth. So bringing these into your life on a whole level really changes the way you function and helps you to reach your highest self. And luckily, research is growing. So look at this chart. This tracks from 1944 to 2014, and you can see, and I bet if we have another um, release of this study for 2017, it's going to even skyrocket higher than that. But this is awesome that companies like doTERRA, which is the number one essential oil company in the world, has the finances to fund new research and produce oils of such high quality. They're actually reinventing healthcare. And this is such a breakthrough for the natural health world. As someone who studied essential or studied um, herbology for over 25 years, I can't tell you how many times I've been in a class where the teacher said, well, I wish we had more funding for research, or there's just not enough regularity in the plant material for it to be used in research, or there's not enough funding. And now we're, we're having studies that not just verify things like lavender lower stress, which is traditional knowledge, but they're actually researching new frontiers in health, including things like genetics, methylation, cancer. What's becoming very evident is the rising global demand for more research and more access to essential oil education and high quality essential oils. So this brings us to the heart of the webinar, which is essential oil use for childbearing. In this presentation, I will touch on some of the basics of essential oil use during the childbearing year and lead you to tools that will help you build your confidence in this area, whether you want to integrate essential oils into your pregnancy or postpartum or your practice in the birth field. You can simply access these materials or study them on a deeper level through what I have gathered. So there are three main applications that we will talk about tonight. And these are what you use mostly when you're working with essential oils, or actually entirely. You're going to be either using them aromatically, topically, or internally. So let's start with aromatic use. I think of this method for mood and emotions, for memory, for purifying the air and opening sinus pathways. Aromatic uses include diffusion, direct inhalation from the bottle or cloth. I often have moms bring essential oils with them to a birth, or I'm sorry, bring essential oils and bring a special handkerchief or something. So if they're between contractions, they have like their grandmother's handkerchief it's, or a scarf that they like. So that's a nice way to use these. You can also use them in a facial steam or any application that is near the nose so you can smell it. So even if it's a topical application like you'd think of for like a bath or a massage, if you can smell it and it's on the top part of your body, then it's also aromatic. There's a lot of overlap with these things. And so filling in here, there's a few uses that are specific to childbearing, like for mood and emotions. I think of women having poor sleep, having some anxiousness, transition phase of labor. For memory, baby brain, People talk about a lot and experience a lot where they're just really not in the moment very much. And maybe sometimes they need to be. If you have multiple children or a job, you need to be a little bit more alert. Caretaker mental fatigue is really common since a lot of births happen during the night. And also looking at things like poor immunity, exposure to illness, and preparation of the labor room is great for diffusing oils or using a spray. Sinus pathways. 
when you're congested and you're pregnant, you don't want to go and use an over-the-counter remedy, really. People try to lessen their exposure to things like that. And for infants, too, what do we do for infants? Um, essential oils can be a really nice, gentle way to clear congestion. So people often ask me about safe aromatic use in different phases of childbearing and in postpartum particularly. So here are some important things to keep in mind. Use only the highest quality oils. Keep, but keep in mind these oils are not just incredibly pure but also very potent therapeutically. A little goes a long way. Do not use store-bought oils that have not been tested and certified pure. I'm not putting up the slide this time but I've I've referenced this in some of my other classes that there was a study on jasmine, synthetic jasmine versus natural jasmine. And the synthetic jasmine actually caused a stress response in people while the natural high quality jasmine caused a relaxation. So even if you're using them aromatically, some people think it doesn't really matter, but actually it has a huge impact on us when we use them aromatically. So do also be concerned about quality in the aromatic use. Avoid exposure to any one oil for a prolongated time. And you want to alternate things like geranium and lavender for sleep anyway because our bodies tend to adopt, adapt to using the same thing and it will be more effective at addressing your issues. Also, infants need to smell their parents and their environment. So there shouldn't ever be constant exposure or constant diffusion, particularly with infants. So the Diffusers that I use not only keep the oil intact, we don't want to destroy the properties that have been so diligently preserved, like that's what therapeutic quality is, is we want every constituent maintained through the entire processing, so we don't want to then just put it in a poor quality diffuser and have it burned up for example. But if you have a nice quality diff diffuser, you'll keep the oils intact and they will also be released over spurts. So they'll come on every like 20 minutes, say. So it's not going to be a constant stream and I think that's a really good thing to keep in mind if you are a parent of a young babe. Um, so before we proceed, take a moment to remember what you learned in the first few minutes of the class, that these oils are taking the world by storm. They're not just good smells as most of us tend to associate with essential oils, but they have profound effects on the brain, on the neurotransmitters, on the hormone balance, the cellular function, the pain receptors, and so much more. The sense of smell itself is incredible. It collects 10,000 times more information than the sense of taste, touch, and sight combined. Scent is the only sense that bypasses the cerebral cortex, which is the thinking part of the brain, and goes straight to the primal limbic system, which is the seat for emotions and memories. So this means that essential oils reach our innate primal brain without interface from the thinking brain. It's our only perception of our environment directly without us getting hooked in our thoughts and making judgment on the situation. It just comes directly to our, our approach of acknowledging the world. So I think this is really powerful. The limbic system also affects emotional response, mood, motivation, pain sensation, and pleasure sensation. When we inhale essential oils aromatically, the effect is immediate, just a few seconds for it to take effect. Our brain chemistry changes, our feelings, and our thoughts change. We can essentially decide how we want to feel. So if you're using a really good oil, you can Inhale it when you're feeling a certain way and change your mood really quickly. It's amazing. And this is something that I've done so many times for my kids and really, really appreciate done for myself. Um, and certainly during pregnancy when a lot of people go through emotional issues, this is a great tool to have. Um, and it can also help you with negative thought patterns and with releasing trauma, including birth trauma. So here's an example of how essential oils can be used to help support stress and manage moods in postpartum and pregnancy. So you can use this horizontal continuum to decide whether yourself or the person you're working with is without peace or without passion. And then you can use the vertical continuum to decide whether they're without fatigue or, or sorry, whether they're fatigued or stressed. So once you figure out what quadrant you're in, you can plug in an essential oil blend to help you and affect those neurotransmitters associated with that kind of disposition. So here I do have the name of specific oils, but I also have below what they're good for. So like 
serenity is calming and it's full of a lot of floral oils whereas elevation is cheering and it has both floral and citrus which is very uplifting so this is really powerful um, if you don't want to use the chart you can also have people just smell the four different oils to get a sense of what they're most attracted to and most people will sort of swing between one or two oils but I know through the course of the year all four of them <laughs> come into play in my life so they're all very helpful and next I'm going to talk about peppermint essential oil and how that can be used aromatically. So peppermint's actually a very versatile oil. It has many uses during pregnancy throughout. And some of the aromatic uses include uh, morning sickness, vomiting, indigestion, gut imbalance, sinus congestion, reactions to things like food, pets, or the environment, headaches, hot flashes, overheating, fatigue, labor pain, and the facilitation of contractions. For labor pain, peppermint is one of those oils that penetrates very deeply. So it's really nice to combine with more sedative oils like clary sage and lavender or Roman chamomile. This oil also works really well with lavender and marjoram for immune protection. So there's a lot of really great blends on the market for immune support and a lot of them contain things like cinnamon and clove which affect the volume of not the volume of blood, but affect your cardiovascular system. They're stimulating. So during pregnancy, I prefer to avoid things like cinnamon and use more of a blend such as this with the marjoram and lavender. You can also have ginger in it, peppermint in it. Um, really nice for immune support. Mentally and emotionally, peppermint helps with confusion, unsteadiness, brain fog, hysterical dispositions, the transition stage of labor, overcoming negative thinking and coping with intense emotions. I have actually used peppermint during labor for nausea and it's it's pretty amazing. You can just put a drop into a vomit bucket if someone's feeling nauseous and when they inhale the oil it wakes them up. It doesn't just help with the nausea. It has these positive side effects. It has so many layers of action that the mom will feel more energized if she's feeling fatigued she will remember why she's in labor that she's having a baby she'll have more stamina she'll have mental clarity again and also just be able to breathe better through her nose and br breath is a big part of labor and a big part of coping with pain and with what things are when things are difficult so that in and of itself is amazing so a few precautions peppermint in some women decreases breast milk production we don't have scientific research on this yet, but we can use anecdotal evidence from our growing community, which is one of the things I love about partnering with other people with interest in this topic. So it's a good idea to avoid peppermint with homeopathic remedies because it could be an antidote. And with medical conditions such as cardiac compromise or epilepsy, also avoid in baths that can be too cooling. And in noses, don't put up your infant's nose. This is one of the big things that people do wrong that um, causes them to get written up in the um, danger zone. Um, don't apply to a baby's chest as well. This is too strong and cooling for a baby. Try it on your own chest if you don't believe me. And yeah, that's pretty much it. It's a great oil to have in your birth kit. And here's a study that just is providing evidence that peppermint is useful for nausea and vomiting. And it showed that inhaling peppermint or ginger not only reduced the incident severity of nausea and vomiting, but also decreased antiemetic requirements and improved patient satisfaction. So while I'm big on research, I like to acknowledge that there's valuable information that comes from other sources than just scientific research, which certainly is lacking for this field because not everyone feels comfortable testing on pregnant women. Um, so that being said, I think these are equally valuable looking at things like traditional use, instinct, and also experience and anecdotal evidence. So when I research and learn about things in this field, I keep all of these things into mind and hold them at equal value. I do love to get the research that confirms those other areas, but I think that they're all valuable and we should come together more and partner so we can build this knowledge base. That's my huge goal for all of this. So clary sage is another wonderful option for 
um, beginning once the mom is at term. So clary means clear, and this oil can be thought of for all types of clearing. Clearing negative energy from space, clearing away brain fog, clearing sinuses, and even helping to clear a baby or retained placenta from the uterus. And here are some of the other uses. So clary sage can be used aromatically to encourage regular and effective contractions, increase mental clarity, and decrease labor pain once contractions are strong. I don't use clary sage much to start labor, but if that's working for people, please tell me. Um, I just I think that a mom needs to be ready for labor. I haven't found any essential oils that will bring on labor if her body is not ready. But once labor starts, it can help a mom to relax and make contractions more effective. So it is also one of the most sedative oils available to us. So that's pretty amazing to me that it can make your contractions stronger or more effective, but it's also sedative and relaxing. Like those two things seem like they shouldn't go together, but with clary sage, they do. And other aromatic indications include bringing on first lactation. So after the baby's born, if there's a delay there, you can diffuse clary sage or use a spray. After pains, postpartum night sweats, hormonal dysregulation, respiratory weakness, anxiousness, irritability, troubled sleep, and baby blues. Wonderful for getting those hormones balanced after the baby's born. A few precautions, just avoid until mom's at term and also with suspicion of a poor positioning of the fetus. So you don't want to really encourage labor if the positioning of the fetus is not where you want it to be. Avoid with alcohol unless you want really spooky dreams and when postpartum bleeding is heavy. So this slide states some research showing the inhalation of clary sage to help pregnant women to relax. This is really powerful. This might seem very simple, but I've taught classes on pain before. I've done a lot of studying on pain, and half of pain is stress and being tight with your muscles. So if we can help to relax people, we can decrease pain in and of itself in that way. However, I will say essential oils do more than just that. They actually can work on pain receptor sites and um, do a lot of other things like manage blood pressure. I have research I talk about in my longer class on that. So there's a lot more to it, but this is a really important thing. So now we'll look at topical use. When applied topically, essential oils have a direct impact on the body and the mind, the physical and the emotional. Uh, use on the bottom of the feet, I don't use as much if I want to affect the emotional. Like I said, I like to be able to smell oils for that purpose, but we can think of topical applications for things like physical discomfort, organ function, and stress. And for specific uses during childbearing, muscular and nervous system discomforts, labor, pain, and discomfort, tissue recovery after the birth, digestive and circulatory issues, course during pregnancy often recovery of the uterus like getting it back in position poor sleep hormone imbalance and infant adaptation and here is an illustration I keep talking about how easily these are absorbed in the body but here is a look at this because I think you're going to appreciate um, these things so first before I go into this I'm going to give you an, a little bit more information um, about how to apply these so methods of application that touch the skin are what make up topical uses. So these include foot baths, baths, massage, sprays, infused cold packs, really good after birth, and hot compresses. Um, a lot of women or birth care providers will bring a crock pot to a labor and include in it things like glycerin, which is an emulsifier to help blend the water and the, and the oils. And then they'll put oils in that pot and fill it with rags, and that can be used throughout as a hot compress. Uh, unlike most drugs, topical application of essential oils bypass the liver. So if you use essential oils, for example, for postpartum muscular pain, you provide relief and bypass the, the GI system and the liver, and it happens much more quickly. So this is great for people with gut inflammation that don't tend to handle non-steroidal anti-inflammatory options well. Essential oils also work much faster. It takes typically 30 minutes for pain medications to take effect, whereas essential oils are very quick. So this first slide shows you oxidative stress on red blood cells. This is from a finger prick. And less than 60 seconds later, this is the result of putting an essential oil blend called balance on the bottom of the subject's feet. So in less than 30 seconds, the blood in the finger is affected to this extent. 
So you don't need to believe what I say. <laughs> Just look at this slide, right? So um, we're going to talk a little bit about how how to adapt dosing for pregnancy, but I want to state that it's important to understand that herbs are not drugs and they're used differently than drugs. The oils contain hundreds of different constituents that often will act in harmony with the individual's unique constitution. So if this makes it not only difficult to prescribe an exact dose, but also not fitting to make umbrella statements because we need to keep awareness on this constitutional individuality. Some people will need a lot less than other people. In pregnancy, women tend to be much more sensitive to things, especially those that are new to essential oils. So here are some guidelines for use in maternity. Uh, it shows you under massage that with pregnancy, we'll use one to two drops per teaspoon of carrier oil. You can use more than one teaspoon in a massage. That's just a general like concentration. A lot of the issue here is about skin sensitivity. So that's one reason for this warning. For labor, I do three drops per teaspoon or sometimes more. It just depends on the need, but I always start with the minimum concentration and then build up over time, you know, when I know there's no reaction. And I'll just kind of skip through this and say newborn babies, it's more like one drop per tablespoon. So more often you would keep that in a tight fitting jar and make it ahead and keep it by the changing table for use. And with touch dilutions, what I mean by that is if you're just covering a small area of skin and not doing a whole massage, then you can have the oils be more concentrated. I use gentler oils for this, and I use about one part of essential oil to two parts of carrier oil in a roller bottle. So these are things you can make ahead. So you can do like a digestive blend and just roll it into your stomach. Um, you can also do blends for mood or headache and put it on your temples. There's a lot of different uses for this kind of touch application. So other safety tips, use lower dilutions because essential oils cross the placenta and there is a degree of protection in the immaturity of the fetus because the fetus's liver is unable to metabolize the compounds into more toxic ones until after birth. So it actually gives the fetus a degree of protection. Really what's usually dangerous, if anything at all, with essential oils, and I actually think they're very safe, but if people have trouble, they metabolize the essential oils in phase one of liver detoxification, they, they make them into a more dangerous form and some people can't, their, their liver's not up to, to par. So um, if there's compromised liver health, then you might want to work with your doctor and not just do this, but most people find them very safe and, and effective without any trouble at all. So you want to use a lower dose, you want to dilute, you want to avoid prolonged exposure to any one oil, use the minimum effective dose, store out of reach of children, Big issue here, that's one of the main causes of harm. And use care with photosensitizing oils, such as the citrus oils, especially bergamot. So I have had people, not that I work with, but heard stories that they use bergamot on their chest, or there's a blend called Clary Calm with bergamot that's really great for um, postpartum. And if moms are using those on their skin and then going out in the sun in some place other than uh, early spring in Oregon, they're gonna maybe have trouble apply, you know, with sunburns and things like that. So I do want to just mention here that uh, with doTERRA, since between 2008 and 2014, their total number of reported adverse reactions to their essential oils is 0.006%. So really low. And that's another good thing that comes along with using really high qualities that you have a lot less adverse reactions. Another oil that we can think of for uh, topical use is lavender. This is one of the most beloved, versatile, and safe oils, and it's one of the most adulterated oils. So be careful about the quality for sure with lavender. Some people consider it to be the Swiss army knife of essential oils, meaning that you can use it for so many different things. And I know this is really a common one, but I wanted to bring it up in this class because there might be a lot of uses you don't even think of for lavender. And um, so this is the one I talk to people and they say, yeah, I use essential oils in maternity. I use lavender. <laughs> it's like, oh, okay, well, that's good. But maybe they don't use it in the ways that they can. Or there's actually, like, I can think of 17 more oils you could bring into your birth kit besides from lavender. So let's look at lavender, though. Lavender is good for a lot of things, including skin and tissue. That's a huge uh, thing that you want to think of lavender for. Immune support nervous system imbalances and digestive problems. So think of it for things like stretch marks and tissue recovery, insect bites, dry skin patches, overexposure to sun or heat, 
postpartum wound healing, viral and bacterial pr uh, protection, ear discomfort, using that externally, muscular labor and after pains, retain placenta, headaches, constipation, morning sickness, pregnancy-related vomiting, colic, gas, intestinal and uterine cramps. It's also been shown to be hypotensive and supportive for stress, troubled sleep, tension, nervousness, and depressed mood. So that's a lot of different things that you can use lavender for. Beware that it could be sedative on midwives or doulas or people accompanying moms when, during their labor or during their pregnancy. And special care should be used with people who have hay fever or asthma that's triggered triggered by flower pollen. Some people are allergic to lavender. And avoid with low blood pressure or epidural because of potential hypotensive effects. I actually really strongly believe that if you're just having completely natural birth or you're having an unmedicated uh, life, then I don't think that lavender is contraindicated for low blood pressure. Personally, I haven't seen that. It's more that if you're on medication that could lower blood pressure, you want to be careful to not include an extra hypotensive because then you're in the arms of the medical world and you might just um, mess with the results of the medication. So be aware of that. Also use caution for the induction of labor because of its potential effect on uterine tone. And again, this is just kind of messing with what Western medicine has control as a controlled environment. Um, I do in my longer class have a lot more tips on how to use these during a medicated birth. So here's some research on the use of lavender oil for wound healing, and this is in a randomized control study conducted on 120 or, um, women, pregnant women, and they found that redness in the lavender group was significantly less than controls, suggesting that lavender oil could be used instead of povidone iodine for episiotomy wound care. So I expect we'll see a lot more information like this. I think it's a great alternative. It's something you can put in a sitz bath or make a postpartum spray and include things like geranium, maybe some frankincense. It's it's a really lovely oil to use for that. And here's a photo demonstrating some of the topical uses. This is a chemical burn and after a lavender spray 15 days later, look how beautifully that healed. It's something that I would never go on vacation without, I would never not have in my medicine cabinet. I think I probably have five bottles of lavender floating around, like one in my car, one in my purse, just all over the place. I think it's excellent. Okay, so now we're going to talk about ginger for topical application. And ginger is best known for its ability to facilitate the absorption of nutrients by increasing digestive secretions. And it also can block pain receptor sites. These are two of the big uses that we think of for maternity. It's helpful for cramps and spasms of all types, including those of the intestines, the lungs, the uterus. It addresses loose stool, morning sickness, indigestion, gas, colic, normal prenatal vomiting, motion sickness, muscular discomfort. It's another driving oil like peppermint that goes deep into your body and good for labor pain and after pain. Actually, it's traditionally used in a lot of Asian countries as a poultice after a woman gives birth. So really commonly applied um, after birth to the abdomen. It can also be used for strengthening immunity. Emotionally, gin ginger is very warming and stimulating. It's a good choice for restoring stagnant energy or chi or fluid. And it energizes physically and also helps with nervous exhaustion. It's warming for feelings of depressed mood and loneliness. And this oil can be mildly photosynthesizing. I wouldn't worry too much about it, but maybe not apply it to the skin for hot sunny days. When diffused, it can cause coughing in some people. That's very seldom, but I just like to have everyone informed about what could happen so that you can be aware of it. It can be overly warming for some people, especially people who run very hot, um, which is common during pregnancy. You can also cut it like with peppermint oil. This makes a nice blend and then it will cool it down a little bit because peppermint is so cooling. So now we're going to touch on internal use. Because of the purity of these oils, there are many oils I would not hesitate to take internally as a non-pregnant adult or even give to my kids internally. However, I feel that it's prudent during pregnancy and while nursing, especially in the first six months, to avoid self-dosing internally with essential oils. And here are some reasons. So essential oils are actually eight to ten times stronger than 
when you have them internally than when you apply them topically or use them um, aromatically. And remember that we're going for the lowest effective dose, okay? This is one drop of peppermint oil and it's equivalent to about 28 cups of peppermint tea. So if you're pregnant, like, do you need that much tea? Um, peppermint's not um, an abortifacet, it, but it is an aminagog which can bring on menses. So we just want to be careful. I wouldn't want women to, with reckless abandon, just start popping or taking drops of peppermint every time they're nauseous. I do think that we can have similar effects with using topically and aromatically. So um, oils are also very detoxifying. So if people aren't used to, to using essential oils, this is certainly not the time you want to detox. You want to start really slowly. And with internal use, they're especially detoxifying. The first time I tried essential oils internally, my friend shook like five drops of oil into the tea that I had. And I took a sip and my, this was when I was still, hadn't recovered from my postpartum issues, but my hands started sweating. I had a very clear adrenal response. Like my cortisol dropped. I got lightheaded. It was really traumatic for me. So I am very aware that we all have different constitutions and some people people are going to be affected more than others. We also lack research on using essential oils internally during pregnancy. I hope this will change. I'd really like to see us become more informed about this. And one of my main reasons for not recommending it is because we don't have the ability to control the amount. So people are used to using these for self-care and sort of self-regulating how many they use. And it's hard to get the message out there that, oh, sure, it's safe to use a little bit, and it depends on your constitution. So how do we teach people what the right amount is? It really requires more thought, I think, than topical and aromatic uses. And I don't know that everyone is informed enough to put that kind of thought into it. So of course, there's a number of exceptions to this rule, such as when essential oils are prescribed by a doctor or um, an, some sort of um, informed expert, you know, who specializes in this field with pregnancy. And it's being used for something like acute illness or it's used as an alternative for something that's less safe. So in that case, I can see this being a really practical option. We also eat essential oils in our food often and in over-the-counter medications. And these are food-grade essential oils. So, you know, they're in gum, they're in cough medicine, they're in all kinds of things. And I've never seen any FDA restrictions during pregnancy to avoid certain cough syrups that have essential oils in them. So I don't want to be an alarmist about this. I'm not worried if people say that they've they had some guacamole with lime oil in it. Like <laughs> I'm really not, but I but I also think that we need to be really cautious about this and not just start popping them for for self care. Um, really, the danger that I've seen is when they're taking an excess of five to ten milliliters, which is like you know this is 15 milliliters, so that's that's a lot. That's a lot to take internally. Um, so it's very common for birth professionals and moms to avoid using essential oils during childbearing to err on the side of safety. I hear this all the time. And there are still others who use essential oils freely, but they don't have any discretion over how much they use. So what I did when I first started learning more about this, and a lot of it was demand from the people I was working with. They wanted to know more, and I also felt these could really help them, is I actually left my clinic I was working in, and I spent a year researching this topic specifically. And I created a continuing education class for practitioners on this topic. And it was a lot of work and study, and I really wanted to cover all bases. So uh, once I put that information together, I sort of started over time to transform the way I present this. I no longer think it should just be for practitioners, although I think practitioners are our voices, our way of sharing this information with others. So I really believe that essential oils have the power to change women's exper experience during her childbearing year and to set her on the path to finding natural remedies to care for her family and all of her mothering years to come. And this presentation just scratched the surface of this valuable topic. So I've shared today some examples of how essential oils can change a woman's experience during her childbearing year. But most of you on the call tonight are here because you're aware of the need and aware of the potential. And you may have patients or clients coming to you for guidance. But what's really perfect is that we've been able to develop an opportunity for you to receive access to free clinical training on this topic join our online community forum. And if you're drawn to doing so, there's also an option to share this opportunity with others in this education with others. So I'd like to see people who 
want to do that, fill the need by helping people and also being able to help their own businesses and lives by adding a new income stream. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about how this works and how you can be involved if you would like. So here are the opportunities. So I'll spend the next portion of the webinar sharing more about our program so that you can choose your level of participation and whether or not you'd like to work alongside our beautiful community of moms and birth professionals who also care about this topic. So the body of knowledge and community are growing. So expect many more educational tools to come aside from what I'm showing you tonight. So I have many professional partners I'm now working with. Some are doing research to earn their doctorate degrees and they're in the medical field. Others are intuitives. It's just absolutely beautiful. And I'm beginning to bring them in to contribute to this community. And I think more voices than just my own are called for. So if you're driven to doing this, I'd love to hear from you and make a connection. But the core of our educational training at this point is presented in this self-paced online course. The materials for this course have been thoroughly researched. It originally served, as I said, to, to service birth professionals, but now it's modified for moms to be and professionals. So this is helpful for moms, but for birth professionals as well, because you can actually pass this on to your clients and patients who are interested in learning more and know that they will have informed information about how to use these safely. So the course itself is five hours. It includes eight modules. It's self-paced. You have at least a year to access the materials. And for those who wish to do so, you can take the five quizzes and request a certificate of completion. And along with the course, you also receive a 14-page usage guidebook, which comes with so much information. Um, it comes with, let's see, information about charts for safety, concentration, specific indications for each phase of maternity, including postpartum and infant care. It also includes our blends booklet with 22 DIY blends that can be made at home, or it could be a fun class for your clinic or for your, your friends. We also have found that bundling these tools with the purchase of essential oils makes this program much more affordable for participants. So those of you um, well, let me show you this first. This, these are the modules for the class. We go through pregnancy, third trimester, labor, postpartum, lactation, infant care, safety, concentrations, methods of application, carriers, use in a hospital setting, and the process of taking quizzes and having a certificate. And there's actually like four more things or five more things that I don't have listed there. I didn't have space, but it's pretty, pretty great. Um, okay, so what we do is I call this program the Birth Kit Mama program and again I'm going to show you how to get free access to this but it's the e-course, the 14 page guidebook, the 22 DIY blends booklet and a membership in an online forum where you can connect with other moms and birth practitioners and learn more. Oh and private mentoring. That, I meant private mentoring but private mentoring. So everyone that does this gets to mentor with myself or one of my team leaders who have been training in this field. Um, so you have a personal relationship if you want to explore this topic further. So the cost of the course is 125 US dollars and you can do that and you can buy, like the booklets are available for sale at aromatools.com. The course is available for sale on my website, dailynectaressentials.com. But if you are also interested in ordering wholesale therapeutic quality essential oils, what I've done, and I had like sort of an epiphany over the holiday that I thought, gosh, people are coming to me. They want this information and I have to charge them for the class and then I have to charge them for the other materials. And if I just have them join me and open a wholesale account through me, all my commissions come through commissions from doTERRA. So I decided since I love doTERRA oils anyway, to bundle the cost of the oils with the program. So if you do not already have an account and you would like to order $100 worth of essential oils, I give you access to all of these things for free. And as I add more information and update, like I'm coming out with an app this year and I'm also partnering with someone for early childhood education and someone else for intuitive approach to oils. So there's a lot of stuff coming and once you join our community, you just get access to everything freely. Um, so if you don't already have your oils, that's definitely the best value to just order a hundred in essential oils. But if you already have your oils, then please like, I would love to, to work with you to purchase the class or you can also become an affiliate and help me to share this education with others and receive 50% of commissions. So trying to create a really great way to share this with so many people. And so a little bit more about how it works with the oils. 
Um, oh, and just to tell you first, so anyone listening is welcome to access our free webinars, our charts, our blog articles on the website. So there's a lot more that is just freely there for you to take however you'd like. Now let's talk about the oils. So they're such a valuable investment for your health, your business, and your quality of life. So pictured here is a price per drop. Compared to other wellness options, I find this to be very minimal. For example, you can easily support a low-income family with an essential oil spray for under $2. It's pretty amazing. And those sprays last for a while, you know? They're, they're really great for people to have around. And if you keep in mind that most applications are just one to two drops each, and that oils have shelf lives that last for years, look at how cheap it is to use these. Like, it's really a wonderful investment that lasts a long time and is totally affordable. So if you're considering adding essential oils to your birth or birth practice, then you just need that 100 PV order to get you started, but there's a lot of different options for ordering, and I'll explain how to pick out your oils and find out which ones I recommend, and, and then after that, how you can earn an income through this program. So here's how it works. There's two ways to purchase oils. You can purchase them retail or wholesale. So if you just want one or two oils, retail might work fine for you. But most people will opt to get 25% off by ordering wholesale and receiving our clinical training. Once you open a wholesale doTERRA account through myself or one of the birth kit advocates on my team, so if someone invited you to this class, then you'll want to go back and talk to them about this. It's kind of like joining a buying club. You pay $35 US or Australian, and you order anything you'd like at wholesale cost. So a better option than picking out individual oils is to choose an enrollment kit, which bundles the cost of oils with the membership fee and actually saves you money. So if you would like, you can look on my website. So this is what my website looks like, the dailynectaressentials.com. And you can look under the essential oils tab, and there you'll find different enrollment kit options ranging in price from 150 US dollars to a few thousand dollars. So larger kits actually offer you much greater savings, but each kit is excellent and will provide you with many options. So it's really just up to what fits you and your business or your lifestyle best. And if you decide to order in March and you have an order over 200 PV, then you'll also receive a free bottle of Deep Blue Muscle Rub and a 10 milliliter roller bottle of Deep Blue Touch. So those two together are worth $100. So it's a pretty great time to consider opening a wholesale account anyway. And I don't use those two during pregnancy because they have winter green in them, which is methyl salicylate. So I, I save them for postpartum. I think they're amazing during postpartum. And if you're a birth care professional or a massage therapist, you'll really like to use these just for yourself or your family. They're really great. Um, so this is, this is the steps you'll want to take if you're interested in looking more into this. So look under that essential oil tab and you'll find oils recommended for each phase of maternity. So I have this on the website. You can look on whatever phase you're thinking of. If you're a postpartum doula, you can look in postpartum. You can click into the individual oils and read more about what they do. And you can also go down. I have a section which shows you the doTERRA enrollment, enrollment kits. And I have another section that shows you just in general enrollment kits, which I made up. So these are like, this is your dream birth kit, you know, and it has all the oils I would absolutely recommend for you. And if you do it that way, then you, you do need to like open your wholesale account like you would joining Costco or something. You have to pay the $35 fee and then buy each oil individually, but you do have a lot of options for what you order. And you can also um, decide once you have a wholesale account whether you'd like to join our Birth Kit Advocate program. And I'm so excited about this program. Here are just a handful of the lovely women I'm working with. I launched this program this year, and I'm pleased to already be partnering with incredible women from four different continents. So if you are a doctor or wellness professional and would like to add essential oils as a new modality and potentially contribute to our educational offerings, or if you're a mom and you'd like to create a new income stream sharing this program from your home, or if you're a busy birth professional who would like to pass our flyer on to colleagues and clients, any kind of level of participation that you are interested in, we are here to meet, okay? So you're invited to share us in this beautiful opportunity. The goal here is to uplift more lives and to get this education out to the world. And I think also to bring people into our community. I envision this beautiful way to share information too and to really build our knowledge base about how to use these in different phases of maternity and then going into child care. Um, so your prenatal patients, your friends, your clients, they might be asking you for advice. 
but most people I know feel they lack the training, the evidence-based research, and the confidence to provide any guidelines at all. You may love what you do, but you may be desperate to earn more money to support your family's dreams. If you are a birth professional, I assume that you're probably in that second place because you are absolutely undervalued, economically speaking, and this can be a wonderful way to have a new income stream that helps take care of your requirement. So participants in the Birth Kit Advocate program, again, this is optional. You can just get the oils and education, or you can just get the oils, or you can just get the education. You can choose whatever you want. But if you'd like to participate in this, you receive one-to-one -one mentoring, educational tools such as keynote lectures, flyers, the option to participate in our online group business training, and our, our calls together, we as Birth Kit Advocates strive to provide this missing piece to connect women and birth professionals to the clinical level education, simple usage guidelines, and high quality essential oils that are necessary to uplift maternity and provide natural forms of self-care. That is our mission. So I invite you to look at these opportunities. If you gravitate toward opportunities to help others, if you're inspired to share essential oils with your patients, clients, or friends, or to create a new modality for your health practice, or you would like to create a new income stream with unlimited potential, you'd like to work for yourself, choose your own hours, determine your own level of commitment, you're intrigued by the opportunity of working with a dynamic group of like-minded people, and I should add that I love diversity. So the way that we're like-minded is that we love essential oils and birth. Like everything else, I love diversity. I totally crave it. I think it's beautiful. I want to bring it in. Um, and also, if you would enjoy participating in some of our group trainings or mentoring or live conventions. So I invite you to schedule a call with me or a birth kit advocate who invited you to this webinar. You may also want to sign up for our program by placing your first wholesale order through my website or a link provided by the birth kit advocate that invited you. And you will receive a private access link shortly after you put in your order, as well as a request to schedule a membership overview. You. So if you were invited by someone who's not in our program, please talk to them about the incentives that they offer to their customers. And that is all I have to share with you. And it looks like there was a question about oils to help with sleep. I mentioned these at the beginning. Um, and yes, I feel okay about gum actually, but I know that there's some new gums out. So I, I guess it, it's something I haven't really put that much thought into if it's a new product, but um, oils to help with sleep. I like geranium, as I said at the beginning of the class, Roman chamomile, lavender, frankincense, the blend balance, and marjoram can help with sleep. Try a lot of different things. Melissa can help with sleep. So anyway, I thank you for coming on the call. We have a lot of people signed up that wanted to listen to this later. So if you're listening to the recording, thank you for making time for that. And are there any questions? Okay, well, this is my contact information. And... I want to ask that you please not download and use this presentation without my permission. And I will soon be posting a recording, which you're welcome to share with others. Thanks so much.